Yeah, it's sort of been coming for a while, I think. It was sort of a breaking point for our club. It's been a tough year injury-wise and availability-wise. And we've had a lot of young blokes um, come into the team. It's an extremely inexperienced team right at the moment. And some of the other fellows that have been shouldering bigger burdens because we've had players unavailable uh, are sort of worn down a little bit. So uh, it happens in rugby league. It's not nice. Um, but we just need to move on from that and learn a lesson from it. How do you... Um as, a, as someone who's had experience, you know, bringing teams back from that to back up the next weekend, how do you face the Rabbitohs on Saturday? Oh, well, that's the idea. We're going to get a team together and get ready for the game. The, the beauty of football is it's on again next week and we get another chance. So uh, I think the followers will be looking to get forward forward to getting out onto the training paddock today and, uh, and getting ready for this game on the weekend. Um, you've just got to dust off, go again, look at the things we did wrong and, uh, and what we need to do better this week. So I'm sure the coaches and players have got that in hand. Um, the magnitude of the loss shouldn't affect the process of what we're looking at. The Rabbitohs um, have lots of players out to injury, but also to origin. Is it a good week to get a, maybe a confidence boost for the club, if anything? I don't think they're thinking too much about the Rabbitohs at the moment. They're pretty much looking inwardly um, at their own performance and getting themselves right. Um, as I say, they've got to pick a team today and then get on with the process of making an improved performance next week. I think that's got very little to do with South Sydney this week. Gus, what do you make of suggestions by some saying that the club has gone backwards this year? Yeah, I don't think the club's gone backwards. I'm certain that hasn't happened. Um, the first grade team is very vulnerable at the moment. Our roster is vulnerable. We couldn't afford the type of injuries that we've had. If we're at full strength, we're not getting these results. But unfortunately, we haven't been at full strength all year. And that's just sort of worn us down over a period of time. That's not going to change either. Um, you know, with the roster and where we are in this timeline, uh, this year was always going to be a difficult year. Um, you know, and we've just got to keep sticking to our task of rebuilding the club over a period of time. It's going to take time, we know that. Uh, we've been through this process plenty of times before. Um, we just have to trust that, and we will. I imagine you're super confident in Cameron Serraldo and that he's under no pressure, but did you warn him or did you expect that this would be the toughest year for him? I said it would be a tough year. Um, yeah, our coaches have done an outstanding job, really. Um, and so too are the players. I've been really happy with the, the connectivity and the, um, the way the club has stuck to its task during the year. It's been difficult for them. As I say, we've used more players than any other club. We've debuted more players than any other club. Players have probably been exposed to the top grade before their time. We just had too many of those there on the weekend at the one time. Um, and others too are in their first season and they can't keep going forever at that rate. They need some senior players to come back and play well. And, we need, obviously, to improve the, uh, the quality of our roster over time. That's not easy in a salary cap environment. It's not easy when there's not a lot of players on the market. Um, but we don't want to go out and have knee-jerk reactions in the marketplace either. We need to, to plan what we're going to do. Gus, why are you standing here today in front of the press? Is it to give fans a bit of a reality check on where you're at? Like, this is usually a player off or...? Well, I think the players and the coaches have been doing the media all year, so this was a, a nice change for them. Back the roster. Um, Toby Sexton set to come down. Has that been finalised? Uh, I'm hoping so today, sometime. Yeah, so uh, Toby will be a great addition to the club. He was in the junior program here at one stage when he was younger, so he's, um, he's debuted at the Gold Coast Titans. Um, probably got his pathway blocked a little bit up there at the moment, so um, we're looking for a number seven and a game manager and um, gets his opportunity down here. We're looking forward to him coming down. Have you applied to the NRL, Gus? getting into this team this weekend? I spoke to the salary cap auditor this morning just to look at the process of that um, as we get a changeover of contracts and terminations and all that sort of thing. So we've spoken to them. Uh, I don't know that the coach will use him this weekend, but we'll try to make him available if he wants to select him. Um, you mentioned that there's still a little bit left of the salary cap this year. Are you looking to fill another position um, for the end of the season? And if so, what some of the things, some of the positions you want to target? We still haven't made that decision. We have got some players that are due back from injury shortly. So I think Billy Army Kickow is only a few weeks away now. Luke Thompson is kind of a couple of weeks ago, but he's also kind of indefinite as well. And they'd be great acquisitions back. A couple of our younger forwards that would have been used in their place, Chris Patolo and Sam Hughes, have played very little football this year and probably need to play them in lower grades a little bit before we expose them to the top grade. Look, it's, I think that would be a knee-jerk reaction. I think it would be a panic move unless the right player became available and that may happen before the deadline. Clubs start to get a little bit active then. And if there's certainly something there that can help us, we'll consider it. We've got the money to do it. 
Uh, and we've got money to spend for next year too, but there's not a lot on the market. You know, with 17 teams in the competition now and a new CBA and clubs and managers locking players up for longer, uh, we just need to be patient to make sure we get the right, the right players at the right time. Gus, given it's not a quick fix, how long realistically do you think it is before the clubs in position? You want it to be in. I can't answer that. No one can answer that. It's, it's a difficult question. I just know that we can't cut short or cut corners on the process because as soon as you do, you put yourself further behind. It hurts you in the long term. If you go out and try to look for quick fixes, it never works that way and you're just push, pushing the problem further down the track. Someone has to come in and make the tough decisions and realise, look, this is going to be tough for a while. I wish they'd have done this six or seven years ago. If they had, we wouldn't be in this position today. My aim is that they're not in this position in five or six years' time. Gus, I know you don't want the result of last weekend, but is there, you know, the way you're talking as far as blooding the younger players and the roster you've got, is there a chance we could see similar scores if the dogs going forward? Well, we're playing against some really good teams, and we're going to have to get better at what we do. Um, I'm not so much worried about the score lines. There are other score boards out there that we look at, player performance and effort areas, and. Um, and particularly, I guess, in the way they handle that adversity is really important at the moment. I'm not looking at the big scoreboard. I'm looking at the longer term and the um, and way we judge our players and adjudicate our players. There were some areas that they certainly let themselves down that they can learn from this week. Uh, the big score at the board is not my concern. Gus, you talk about quick fixes and, and not making them. The signing of Toby, do you see him as the long-term solution to your seven dilemma? He's certainly, uh, he's here for the next two years anyway, we're signing for two years, so he'll get his opportunity. Um, number sevens are very hard to come by and they're very, very expensive if you want the best around. Um, I think we're going to have to develop our own, we've got some young kids in the system that we're really happy with, uh, but they're some years away yet. Uh, we need to build the right culture and the right development program here. Um, as I say, that we're not in this position in five or six years' time. That's, that's my aim, is that this club is never in this position again. It's been at the tail of the field for a long time. Uh, I think they ran 13th, 13th, 15th, 15th and 16th um, before I got here. Um, and it's going to be painful for another couple of years yet. Um, we just need to make sure this club doesn't go through this type of period again. Can you talk about that depth really being tested at the moment? Where are the positions that, that you want to bolster um, with, with some of those long-term solutions and long-term signings? We obviously need some forward depth, no risk in the world, and we need a play, We need a game manager. Um, we've obviously got Stephen Crichton coming next year, which will be a big bonus to us, and that's another cog in the wheel. So, um, And we've got some younger fellas coming through that we're really happy with. Where our club has improved, and people don't see it, they see the NRL scoreboard on Sundays, but... The club has improved in so many ways over the last 18 months. Our know, Junior Pathways program is improving all the time. Our talent scouts have done a great job bringing talent in from all over the country and New Zealand and Pacific Islands. And we have to educate them and build, bring them through the Bulldog way. I think the next great Bulldog team will be built from within. And that's the only way I know how. Um, and that will give them long-term sustainable success. But it's a journey to get there. So you mentioned last night that you'd actually said to Cameron Serraldo, maybe come next year, but he wasn't going to come this year? <laughs> it, was, it was a part of the conversation. He could have easily stayed at Penrith and won another premiership and, uh, and you know, he, he, they were going really well out there. It's a great system, great coaches and great players and, um, you know, he was ready for an NRL job. I said that we probably weren't ready for him uh, as a starting point um, and that maybe next year we'd be in better shape. Um, but. He wanted to get into the fight. He said, no, if I'm going to come, I want to be a part of the, the rebuild as well. So uh, I'd known him a long time, and that's the sort of bloke he is. Um, I wasn't saying don't come. I'm just saying that we're not. <laughs> you might be ready for us. We're not quite ready for you yet. So it, it was always a tough ask, particularly in his first job as a head coach. And, but he's handling it really well. Um, he's such a, uh, a controlled and mature young man, and uh, he's doing a great job. Would Payne ask on your radar, Gus, given that you need powerful middle forward? Even with he's the most powerful and the biggest, isn't he, I suppose, yeah. Pretty expensive too, I'd imagine, so <laughs> must have worked out how many of those you can buy. Can you give us an update on Carl Oluwapu? Um, do you foresee that he'll be used again this year? Yeah, absolutely he'll be used again this year. He, he's done a really good job, 18 years of age. Um, before he got here, the only football he really played was at schoolboy level, so um, uh, he didn't do the off-season with us. Um, he was... He was blooded probably before his time a little bit in a position that he's not going to play long term. Uh, we used him as a halfback there just to give us a little bit of control and I thought he did an outstanding job. 
Um, we gave him a couple of weeks off now because he's had a little injury and um, I'm not sure whether he'll play this week, but certainly in the, in the near future he'll play again. I see him as a lock forward going forward, um, very much in the Cameron Murray mould and uh, I think he's going to be a really great player for this club for a long time. Oh, sorry. Oh, I was just going to say, um, talking to Cam, um, what do you foresee to be the end of your season? What do you want to get out of the rest of the year? Just keep improving, keep connecting, and get a better insight into the players and the types of players we want to be a part of this club in the long term. You know, and that'll sort itself out over time. It's a difficult time for our players. We need to be really supportive of the players that we have here at the moment on contract. Um, I don't want to get into how we got into this situation or how the club's history presented us with this, with this challenge. Um, and I don't want to be thinking too far ahead because we've got player fellas here playing for contracts that want to keep their career going and we need to support them. And this week in particular, after what they've been through and the type of, we all know what the media does and we all know what social media does for these young kids and their families too and their extended families and how it affects them. So there's a whole welfare thing here that we need to be on top of the whole time which is part of why I'm here today and not a player or the coach. I need them to be concentrating on themselves and, uh, and I'll represent the club in this difficult week. But, um, uh, you know, we've got great staff, great people. They'll get the best care and hopefully they turn out a little bit brighter on the weekend. Hayes Barham, uh, you spoke about pressure. He's fallen under that spotlight. Did you take him out of the spotlight this week? I'm not sure what they're going to do selection-wise. Hayes Perham has been outstanding for us this year. I mean, he's a minimum wage kid who came here for an opportunity with no real position in mind. He's a versatile player. The reason he was put to fullback by the head coach because he had the best voice in the team. He, had the, he, he was a confident young kid and it was something that we lacked. It was, was real direction from the back and um, you know, he's probably not a fullback, but he's made a good fist of it for us and done a really good job. So um, you know, I, I couldn't be happier with Hayes. In the long term, I think he develops as a versatile player, a utility player and over time. He was thrust into that very important fullback position for us. And he's played there virtually all year uh, in a foreign position. And he's done an outstanding job. He's a terrific young man. He doesn't deserve the type of criticism um, that's been levelled at him. Um, but that's part of football, and that's what we need to explain to them. You know, fans will have their say, and people will feel the things out of emotion. And that's part of the gig that we're in. That's professional sport, and it's character building. And um, you know, we're helping them deal with it. Do you have an issue with fans booing? No, no, I don't. It's part of what we do, and it's part of what they do. Um, they probably don't get to see the players or know the background behind certain situations. Um, and I have had so many emails since the weekend apologising, people saying, oh, I was part of the booing and I'm sorry, I let my emotions get away with me, you know, it was just a normal reaction, etc., etc. But then knowing how it affects the players or, you know, so many emails that I've had apologising for those that were a part of that on the weekend. But that's a part of sport, it's a part of football. People feel the emotion on the day. Uh, we want to give them some good emotions into the future, it's something to cheer about. What about a few fans on the way out? I saw a couple get escorted, giving Cameron Serrato a big earful. Um, you know, like they're allowed to, or at least entitled to boo players if they see fit, but what about the coach? Yeah, well, we're all in it, everyone's in it. That's, that's part of professional football, but it's, uh, honestly, to us that have been in the game for a long time, it's water off a duck's back to, the you kids and the younger kids, and particularly their families, who aren't used to that sort of thing, they're not used to the social media attention, they're not used to the criticism. It's a pretty intimidating experience. It's quite harrowing. Um, and we've actually had those discussions today uh, about how many are affected by it and, and how many actually know what's going on. Many of them don't have social media accounts, but their families do. And, um, and that's why the, it sort of gets through. It affects them more than it affects the players sometimes. So. But for us that have been in the game for a long time, I mean, it's water off a duck's back to us, but it's not easy for them to, to contend with it. It's evident that the fans are very frustrated. Gus, when do you expect you can have a roster that will be at the pointy end contesting deep into September? Well, that's the plan. I don't know how long that's going to take. You know, it's, it's not easy. Um, as I say, development for me is the best to long-term sustainable success. We will try to assist that with strategic purchases at the right price so we don't chew up our salary cap unnecessarily. Um, there has to be a way to manage that going through to the future and unfortunately it hasn't been managed that well in the past. Uh, this board of directors that we've got at the moment have taken a really strong stance and they've backed the program that we've, we've set upon them. 
uh, that they're going to take a long-term approach to this. They've invested very heavily in rugby league and very heavily in the future. Uh, they've invested in everything that we need to set up a pathways program and develop the Bulldogs for the future. And they're to be applauded for it, because that's not easy for boards of directors. That's not easy when fans and members want to have their say. Um, but they're very strong men, they're staunch men, they're very successful in their own right, and they understand how this football club has to operate from going forward. So uh, I, I couldn't be happier with the support that this board has given us and the strength of character that they've shown uh, to ignore the noise and get on with what we need to do to build a proper football club. Gus, can we can get your reaction to the New South Wales Origin team? Oh, I know. It's out of my league. It's out of my pay packet. <laughs> <laughs> we might leave that there. That's okay. All good? <laughs>